You're just gonna look like that for the intro? Fuck. <laughs> thing. That's what I'm saying. We should have just zoomed from inside the studio. <laughs> On the other side. We might have to. Are you ready? We might end up doing it. Yeah. Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast. This is episode five, six. On Smart Nonsense, we talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. Today, we are talking about the book, Everybody, Body, B-O-D-Y, What Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro. Who's this book for? <sighs> it's for us. It's for us, no Belky. No kidding. Oh my God. This is an absolute disaster. I don't know. If you're listening, we don't know whether to talk to the camera, each other. We're going to flip-flop between until we find something. But it's too awkward looking at each other. We're real close. I held Belky's hand. He felt uncomfortable. And then we just... I think that's the problem. First of all, we should release the tapes so that people can see our body language. <sighs> Passive. I'm doing it right now. I'm literally doing it right now. That's why this book is crazy. Um... But yeah, I think we're too close. And we're in Chicago. Dylan's here. Yeah. If you can tell. We're in the studio and uh, it's time to hit the ground running. I think, well, we've already noticed it's a freaky little superpower we have because now it's kind of like OCD where we are super. This. Now you, I don't even. This is what like does that mean? a oh. steeple. It's, it's a. My mini it's steeple. A, it's a dominance thing, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking. <laughs> it's. It's freaky because now everything is just interpreted as Belky has his hand on his eye like, oh, is that hmm. is that him kind of doing some blocking, shielding? There's so much crazy body language that we learned and now observe in the world that you can't unsee it. Yeah, I freaked out. Um, I was so I was leaving a wedding last week. I was shooting video and I called you like a million times because I need you to pick up. It was th- I finished a book the day before this wedding. I almost lost my mind because I'm trying to do my job, but I'm also seeing like all these territorial displays. Like you could tell there was discomfort between the two families. There was obviously discomfort over COVID, COVID, even though we were all tested. Um, But it was fascinating. Who is Joe Navarro? That's a great question, Val. You look at this. Let's go back to the wedding. All right. So Joe Navarro, he was this FBI spy catcher. Basically, I mean, he had multiple roles within the FBI, but he's most known for that. And he's got crazy stories of like how he can tell what these spies in America, whether Russian or whatever, Soviet, what the, I guess not Soviet because he's not that old, but what they were doing in the U.S. And he could pick them out so easily because just different cues in their body language. He could tell when people had done crimes because they'd get uncomfortable. And he's got this cool, like you can tell when people are discom- uncomfortable. And then you start asking questions mm. about what triggered that. That's what I think is so important. You said like, now we have this superpower where we see it everywhere. It's hard to distinguish between, there you go. Like I'm, I'm taking over. You probably can't <clears throat> see this in the shop, but I've got both hands planted on the table um, because it's my turn to talk. It's hard to distinguish between what's, there it is, what's discomfort, what's comfortable, What's actually just comfortable, like crossing your leg, which I do a lot, but what's important is when those things change in your, in your line of questioning. And that's what you can only develop that over a set amount of time with a person. But there are like really obvious things when you just show up at a wedding that, that you can see I the, mean, people splaying out on it, their chair, putting their arm around someone like that's all territorial stuff. What's beautiful is that it's happening constantly. You can observe it. 24 7 so you can practice it really hone it and now we're obsessed with it clearly where we can't go two seconds without noticing uh and i i first got into it because someone that i worked with recommended it because dating talking to girls and like going up for the first time there's a lot of discomfort you got to know like when you're pushing too far that's why <clears throat> i think that it's good to learn these skills because you can, you can tell pacifying. when people are pacifying and like when they're uncomfortable. So it's like, oh, I, I shouldn't get closer in their bubble, like step back. Even. Or their foot's pointed a specific way and they clearly don't want to be talking to you. Oh. Right. Or, I, I kinda, or the opposite. It's, you know, they're, they're focused and pointed in a specific way. That means they do want to engage more. Right. So the, the basic premise is like body language, for the most part, you can't fake it. Because it's yes, you go back. Like yes. let's let's go back our little ape beings. I'm just sitting here thinking, and then you got to talk about the apes. But why did we pick the body language podcast to be the first thing we talked about when we were this close to one another? <laughs> I don't know. I don't like. As it. you're sitting here, my, like, my my legs are under the chair right now. I'm normally well, partly because yeah, that's one locking, right here. locking. Okay, um, the limbic brain. Talk right. about it, please. So you look 
I've heard people call it like the crocodile brain, right? The, the OG evolutionarily, this is the first brain to develop. It's very instinctual. So you can't control that for the most part. It's your just gut reaction. That's what happens. And then whether you can observe what's happening or not. Later on, we get this whole prefrontal cortex and the, the neocortex or whatever. That's where you can control some of the higher level thinking. But the croc brain's still there. Right. So we can't change that. And it's fascinating because Joe is basically breaking down all the croc brain stuff. And croc brain. Yeah, he's, he might get bugged out. I've just heard that term a lot. But like your, your monkey brain. He calls it the limbic brain. Right. It's the limbic system. There were three. It's prefront, prefrontal cortex stuff. That's like high thought, limbic brain, and then one other emotional something maybe. Mm, probably not. I don't know. Probably Regardless, not. all you need to worry about is we start with like... I think anything psychology related or like, um, I guess just how people interact, you got to realize it's nothing in the recent evolution. It's, it's all back to when we were animals. And so you have all these animal behaviors, like this pacifying stuff that we're talking about, that's for survival. Blocking because you don't want to see something, something's too, either you don't want to experience something or literally something is like too disgusting or whatever to see. So you block or you close your eyes, you wince. Yeah, I think can't control it i think what's cool is taking it from the ground up because if if we look back right we're we're a bunch of monkeys running around just trying not to die and so what is going to get us out of trouble assuming we're on the ground now we're not swinging around trees it's your feet so your feet is fundamentally what's going to keep you alive or not so that's where the truest form of body language is and that's what's so fascinating because i never heard that before yeah you always think like, oh, it'd be great to read someone's eyes or be able to read their face or um, their hand movements say a lot. But what Joe Navarro says is like everything you want to know about is happening below the table. Mm. And it's important. Like we didn't set it up for this. We we're obviously doing a bunch of stuff with our hands because we're stupid. But um, it's all happening below the table. Right. Like, I mean, you're on a stool, so it's hard to tell. But because um, there's two, like you can be standing or sitting and there's different ways of interpreting. But fundamentally, you have... What's interesting is everyone says like the fight or flight, right? Everyone oh, thinks yeah. those are the two reactions that you'll have, but they in forget the first one. Wait, in that order, they think it's right. right, fight or flight. And it's completely wrong. It's backwards there and it's missing a step, the most fundamental step. Yes. And so the first one, what, what's before everything? It's freeze. You, it, so you have freeze as in you're the possum, the deer in the headlights. You don't know what to do. You just stop. And I've seen this before because like we would do like talking to people walking in the street or something and it's always the first reaction is just like or or i when i was reading it i was like if i think someone's in the house or i hear a noise or something the first thing is like Mm. it's like this instinct to just gather information right you're gathering well that's that's what they say is before all these predators go off of motion and you he referenced i think columbine too where people would just play dead yeah and it's hard for predators to pick you up if you're not running around. So that's that's where the, the first survival instinct is, is that split second you just freeze. And beyond that, so you'll kind of see that in body language. I don't know how that uh, applies a ton to all of this. I think it's just interesting to know well, like when it, people are Yeah, are in shocked. a line of questioning. Oh, right, if right, right. somebody... Right, if they tense up and they're just like very still. Right then you can tell like, oh, wow, there's discomfort. Right. Actually, yeah, that, that's a good point because you'll see that as the very first reaction. Like, yeah. And then after that, so you have the freeze. And the second one is not fight, it is flight. Because we don't want to fight. You're like Fighting, you, you have a chance of dying. If you run, you're a lot better off. And so flight, you, you can see this because of the feet. Everything, that's what's going to get you out of trouble. So you'll look and... This is everyday conversation. Literally all the time I'm doing this now. It's so instinctual. But I'm looking like, where are these people, where are their toes pointed, basically? If they're towards me, to some degree. Your mic? Yeah, if they're, if they're towards me, then it's like, okay, they're engaged. They, they want to stay in this conversation. But Right, the, I'm looking down to figure out what I'm doing. I've got one foot pointed toward the door. And that's where, like, I don't know if it's comfort or... Well, it's, like it's weird because we're sitting. To do. We're, we're sitting. I think it's easiest if you're standing. Yeah. If you're standing, I see this all the time, right? You just look where their feet are. If you see both feet at you, or good point. If you see both feet are at you, 
then you're like, okay, this person's engaged. If they're both away, you're like, all right, that person clearly wants to go. Like they're just moving their their head or their torso. They're giving minimal effort. They want to go in whatever direction their toes are pointing. And then the last one, which people don't observe, but I see it a lot. I think Joe calls it the L. I think of T. But basically, when one foot is splayed out, so say one foot is pointing at Henry and then the other one is just going somewhere else, that's the direction that people want to go. Right. So I'll see that all the time in conversation, just two people talking, whatever, three people. Really? And I'm just like, oh, that person wants to leave. And the minute what's amazing is you see this and you're like, okay, now I tell them like, oh, I know you got to go, like just, right. you know, put them at ease. Right. And then sometimes you'll see their feet come back to you too. Ah. It's fascinating. Superpowers. So that's, that's what it's all about is just like being. I haven't been being, outside enough to notice this yet. Right. It's, uh... That's why we're so uncomfortable. You're, you're rubbing your knee right now. Yeah. Everyone's nervous. <laughs> But you can see it too. Like we talked about standing. You have the standing, but you also have the sitting like we're doing right now. And this I see a ton too. I probably more than standing actually of where your legs are under your body or outside of your body. Mm. So if you're sitting in a chair, often most people in general, whenever they're talking, their legs are like directly under their butt, under the chair, if that makes sense. Like behind you. Yeah. It's like going. Nervously, right? It's under the seat, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because it's, it's just like you want to curl up in a ball right. sort of feeling. Whereas someone who's super confident is going to be just splayed out, out in general, legs out. Taking up as much space as possible. Yeah. Like literally taking up as much territory as possible. That's, yeah, it's one of the big just overarching themes is like the more space you take up, generally the more confident you are. And the bigger you are. Like that's what's so limbic about it is like the bigger you are, the more threatening you are the less likely you are to be messed with this is a serious podcast now this is really serious because we did six takes before <sighs> and they're all shenanigans absolute shenanigans okay well all right so wait, you're- wait wait you're on you're on freeze flight and then fight there's so, there's some stuff i don't really one. pay attention to the fight but there's like flaring of nostrils and like yeah. declothing and puffing out your chest all this stuff that's just instinctual I don't really get in. The, maybe I should because we're in a little sketchy neighborhood right now. I got to tell my signs. But uh, but for the most part, I think what's effective is knowing like, all right, when is someone uncomfortable? Then you can put them at ease. And then also you can realize that you can use these to your advantage. So say I notice all the time but my legs are under the, the chair or something. And I'm like, okay, I'm a little tense. I'll like take up more yeah. space. And it's this self-fulfilling prophecy of now you're like, okay, I'm a little bit more confident. Right, I was going to say, I feel like the the majority of this book is stuff I'm going to use on myself. Mm. Like, yes, while it's a superpower, I think it's more like I'm going to think twice if I'm blocking. Like, what's what's making me uncomfortable or what's causing me anxiety because I'm like tensed, crossed arms, blocking? I use it more for other people, but... But you, yeah. It's mostly, it's just like, it's nice to know when people are yeah. uncomfortable. You're literally mind reading. Right. It's fascinating. And I think what's important here, we'll get into it more later, I guess, but establishing a baseline. Because like right now, for example, maybe it's just that you're comfortable in that position. Um, Sometimes that happens. But when you see a change. That's what it is. That's massive. And that's what I was saying at the beginning is like, it's all about the baseline. Because you could see me do this. I do this in every podcast. And like, I would say more or less, like, it's just really comfortable. And he says like, it it becomes something if, if you're more tense and you're grabbing versus like... But it's all about the baseline. It's like when things change. If if you look at the first cuts, like clearly we know the baseline and we were like doing this and like rubbing our <laughs> eyes and blushing and freaking out. And it happens at the like at the dinner table too. It's like very apparent when something comes up or someone says something, they go out on a limb like and they start blushing. And I'm like, mm. everybody. So I know they're really uncomfortable saying that thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the the big kind of mind opening was just like start with the legs whenever you see someone start with the legs see what direction they're pointing just wherever they're pointing that's where they want to go if it's Mm -hmm. towards you they want to hang out with you some more you're awesome keep doing that if you see it change and it suddenly splays out and like one foot is pointing that direction be like hey do you have to go or like um what's i don't know you're in a rush or whatever then you kind of have an idea once we we start moving up the body from legs then you get into this little torso type stuff and that's just interesting. I think the most interesting is just like what percentage of the person's body is pointed towards you starting at the feet. So like if I'm 
if I'm like this, I could be talking to you, but I really don't give a fuck about it. like right. If it's just my you're head, you're halfway out the door. Literally, yeah. just everything's that way. I want to get away from you. Oh, that that was a really interesting one from the book. Is when you walk in a room, determining whether or not like someone mm. likes you. If they're like really raised eyebrows, like face defies gravity, he says. Mm. Anything gravity defying is like happiness, joy, like obviously, maybe not obviously. But if if someone does this when you enter the room, which I I do, I know consciously I do for a lot of people. I've seen people do it to me versus like not reacting when you come in or they're in a conversation and they just turn their head like you're saying, Mm. but their torso remains in that conversation. Like they're not that interested in you coming in the door. dude. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to walk back out the door. That's how I want to use this stuff. Like, it's just not worth, I I know where you stand and like, all right. Yeah. I I haven't paid attention to that as much, which is cool because I'm reading this for a second or third time and just, I want to get better at understand yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just checking the time i know we're on a new camera setup it's all this uh... is dangerous you might never see <laughs> no, this continue, setup ever continue. again but I, I don't observe that enough or at least consciously like i think a lot of this stuff is intuitive but the other half isn't it's totally new um but seeing the eyebrows i think they talk about like even pupil stuff pupils dilating um, also defying gravity but basically a lot i don't know with the torso like you can just tell if someone's hands are close to them that's kind of similar to taking up space if it's just like lack of motion in their torso, their arms, whatever. Whenever you see someone moving around a lot, you know they're comfortable. Right. But the minute everything starts coming closer to the fetal position, you're like, okay. You know. <laughs> fetal. I, I think a lot of this stuff too is important um, for interviews, job interviews especially. Yeah. I don't do a lot of that, so I don't know. But I, I feel like if someone's saying one thing about their resume in an interview and they're also pacifying, rubbing their legs or doing something that shows that they're uncomfortable – you may want to like dig into that further. That's yeah. what I got. Up. I think that's the essence because body language, it comes down. You can't tell if someone's lying or not. And we, we actually, right. we read Gladwell's book, Talking to Strangers. Right. And I think there's a lot of interesting stuff there, especially with knowing the baseline first, because people can just be uncomfortable. Like they're, they're just like on part, say you're getting interrogated or something. You're going to be nervous and right. have weird behavior. Yeah. That's what he was like polygraph, you know, lie detector tests. Like they don't really work. What so his whole strategy is telling whether they're uncomfortable or not, and seeing that like deer in headlights, do they kind of start coming in? Um, yeah, does their body just turn into a little coil? And if so, then try and figure out what what did I ask or what came up that got them in that right. position, and then you can start to delve a little bit into deeper. that. I, what's that called? Stockholm syndrome. When you go into an interrogation, and it's just like so intimidating, you ended up confessing to everything. I think that's Stockholm Syndrome. I thought that was when you fall in love with your captors as a... Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah. Oh, maybe. But look, the point is, nobody's going to do well in an interrogation setting. Mm. So, you know, you can't just bombard somebody with questions and because they do one thing with all those questions, assume they're lying. Mm. And I think Joe's like, no, we need to take the slow approach that's like establish the baseline, see when things change, and then go into questioning on that thing. Right. And like right now, another thing, uh, I, I guess... talk about watching things at 2x speed too. True. Yeah, we should go into some little tips and stuff. It's really cool seeing like YouTube videos. I watched Dustin Bieber. He had his little documentary series on YouTube. And like he was super like this mm. for a lot of the interview. And so you can tell like this He is was just... actually, I remember with uh, like, the guy from Apple Music. I forget his name. Justin Bieber wasn't even looking at him. Obviously, yeah. it was like really traumatic stuff they were talking about. But if you see him, he's doing this for half the interview. And I actually remember he opens up at some point. Yeah. And then they start. Yeah. I, I, I want to go back and watch that. That's, and you, I mean, we don't have podcasts in person, but you, you can tell like people are just tense in the beginning and they really start to loosen up, um, I think, with anything. But yeah, like even torso while we're still on it before we go to like hands and face, uh, just seeing like where someone's leaning, it's pretty obvious. But like I remember Belky, maybe she'll listen to this. I don't know. But there's this oh, one girl. I, don't know. I knew she was into you, but you wouldn't believe me because I read this book. I know all body language. At least she she like likes being around you, and that's all right. That's all I can say. But she was leaning in completely, like literally touched you on your arm. I don't know. You, you were you I were out know. of it, but like leaning in clearly didn't care. Leaning out, yeah, you fucking so cool. Care. He just rips through. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting though. It is a superpower. It, that's a that's a great example because like I knew nothing about it at the time. Mm. Just clearly, my mind was elsewhere. 
but you having read it, you see like this whole limbic thing going on. Well, I see like your feet were were pointed kind of elsewhere, like kind of engaged, but not really. I told you, I probably didn't care. Right, and they were full blown like, like trying turned to go towards pra- you. Practice piano or something. Right, very simple man. <laughs> and it, it's just cool seeing this all the time because yeah. now you can you can know when to uh, when you're kind of in the money and when <laughs> you yeah. need some more work. Uh, so working up from there, we get into a lot of hands. Like you're you're rubbing your knee I'm right now. I'm picking a scab. I don't know what that means, but I am pacifying because well, we're talking. We're putting me on the spot. And I know. Like, I'm making it's, you nervous. It's, it's a it's that crocodile brain just well, like trying. I'm to, even like jittering this little yeah. pen right now. But the reason why you do that is because. When you're stimulating these nerve endings, you get all this endorphin, all these endorphins mm. that rush through you, and it it slows your heart rate, mm. like it puts you at ease. So that's why people are just so it's more like the fingertips than it is well, whatever. Touching I mean, your knee, like you feel it in your yeah. arm too. I mean, you're touching two parts, right? Oh, right. Okay. So you're just you're, you're overriding your body with like calming sensations that's and endorphins. So, so that's where this whole touching comes from. You'll see it like there. Um, People do it rubbing their thighs or grabbing their knees. Also, just face in general. You see it all the time. Like, Henry, you do this a lot yeah. of grabbing your kind of beard, scruff, neck. I do this um, a lot. I do that too. Um, it's what's in, it's interesting, like, pointing out to head people. Head tilt he talks about. True head tilt. We'll get there. Um, generally speaking, like, girls, they'll touch, like, their, their neck, this little area. I forget what this it's thing. called. Whatever this that is. This little hole. We're talking about rubbing knees. Just basically endorphins get released when you have these uh, little touch points. And so you, you can see a lot of people rubbing their knees under the table or something if they're sitting. Um, just the self-hugging, which Henry does sometimes, I probably do too. Uh, you'll see that a ton. Um, That's a big one for me because I do it so much. Right. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like at what point do I do this? Do I cross That's my what's arms? fascinating. True. That's what you said with self-observing. Yeah. Now. I don't know. Uh, so seeing that, just generally touching the the little beard area, or if your girl just your face in general, girls touch a lot. Whatever this whole region of it's their neck clavicle. is, a lot of ne- like whenever I see this is wait, this is a great reason for people to tune in on YouTube because true. these are on YouTube now. We're just talking about stuff that you would have no oh, true. idea. We're just saying do this <laughs> and do that, and you got to kind of see the video. True, basically just rubbing anywhere from like your your chest up your face. You're like, okay, this person is soothing themselves somehow. I used, I see him touch like this area a lot. Mm. Plus, he has jewelry there. So, he has his little necklace. You hear and that, eyes? Yeah, We're calling coming. him out. We're coming for you. <laughs> People playing with their rings. There's just like a lot of fidgety things you do Hair. to pacify. Yeah. It's it's all over the place. So, you just like the minute you see that, you're like, okay, some things, so they're tense for some reason. And now you can try and diagnose what that was yeah. by asking more questions or just observing What's powerful, though, is when you can see a stack. So if you see, like, they're, they're, say, grabbing a ring or something like that, or especially, like, neck and face, that's usually the, the most powerful. But say they grab their neck and their legs go into the chair, then you're like, oh, I, I said yeah. some whack shit or, like, something really triggered. Or the, uh, the, airing. Coo- the airing or cooling of your collar. Like, that's one you see in movies, but, like, I think people actually do that if, if they're wearing a, a button-up and, and a tie. Yeah. And yeah, people grabbing ties too. Yeah, or rubbing the back of your neck. Like those are really obvious signs that all is not well. I want there should be a master class. Joe should have a master class of videos. Like I, I was looking at his stuff on YouTube, but it's, it's like here and there. There's, there's some stuff, but it's not dedicated in the book. Kind of pretty good pictures, but it's still it's helpful to see in action. Yeah. Um, that's why it's nice. I'm just observing all the time now, so I've kind of seen it. But for a lot of people, it's totally new. Um, uh, some stuff I guess for Zoom. This is kind of what's interesting to me because we've been talking on zoom now it's weird being in person but seeing like what what tells can you have in person and obviously touching your face grabbing hair or anything like that um but what i see a lot and i think most people don't is when you do this with your lips like you pull your lips inside your mouth i don't know like what to call that face but i've seen it multiple times on zoom and i i I realize like oh i said something off and sometimes you can apologize or like I do it or with. people do it. I've seen not you. I've seen other people do it. Hmm. And it's what 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 kind of behavior is it? Are they It's just like pulling everything towards the core. Like anytime Oh wait, he said something about lips and I tweeted about it because Trump does so much of the puckering oh, it's, of lips. Oh, it's in like the corners of oh, your Oh, it's disagreement, I think. 
at least that. I, I couldn't I couldn't make I, the face, so it was really hard. Yeah. There's so much like you can. That's why it's mind reading. You can tell exactly what they're feeling in that moment uh, on the discomfort. Right. Comfort you say scale. something, you see something, and then you immediately know like, oh, they they're uncomfortable with that, or they disagree with that thing I just said. Right. And that's a good self aware place to be in. I think if you're ultra self self aware, you ask about it. That's a really hard thing to do, is to then like dive to to double down and be like, what about what about that was so. I've I've seen I'm kind of experimenting with like what to do when you realize you're it. You're not experimenting with anything. I did in the past. You haven't left the house. Has not left the house. Comes here could hardly talk to me. What else you got? Well, another one is just blinking longer than usual, closing your eyes. Mm. Like it's blocking. Yeah, anything that's like covering I'll, I see this a lot actually with my family is like rubbing just rubbing your eyes. It's just like, or my mom, my mom has one of like touching her hmm. nose or scratching her arm. I see it a lot. So it's just really cool to yeah. observe these things. And now you, you just have more information. See, yeah. And I'm, I'm still in the position trying to figure out why we were at lunch last week with Athena's cousin and her husband. And Athena told me after I was just like rubbing my eyes a lot. And I was wondering if it was like, I don't even remember it. I don't even remember it. And I'm wondering if it was. Like before or after every time I spoke because mm. I was being put on the spot. But it's just weird to me that she saw this, she observed this, and thought I was uncomfortable about something. I probably was, but I have no recollection of rubbing my eyes. I don't know I, if it was bright out. Like, I don't know what it was, but clearly something was uncomfortable. In eighth grade, we'd have popcorn reads where we'd go around the room. Yeah. And this is when I was nervous back in the day. And I, I, like, I liked it, and then I realized I hated public speaking, and I started getting nervous, and it's just like whatever it's just all positive negative feedback yeah. <laughs> right it sounded like that oh, when i was pop- Shh, it's binky oh we cannot have can't binky have binky con- that's okay. dumb nonsense continue and basically we'd go around the room and i'm getting nervous and nervous and nervous it finally gets to me and i start reading and i'm a good reader like i'll read well but i was just doing this the whole time just this like weird really while you were reading you remember yeah. that well everyone he's, called me by out the way, after he's rubbing his oh. dylan's rubbing his nose yeah. Or kind of the bottom of his, like his upper lip. My mustache, basically, what would have been. And, yeah, it's it's just a weird... People called you out? Yeah, because it was so absurd. Like, the amount that I did it. And That's... I had no idea. Wow. So, you'll... Well, we talk about this nervous yawning. Oh, yeah, we have That's some... something that, that you see dogs do it, first of all. I've seen, like, when our dog gets anxious, he yawns. That's been all of our dogs. But um, I think if you ask somebody who yawns when they're nervous or about to speak, they'd have no idea they were doing it. You do nervous yawners know they do it? I don't know. They must not because it is really obnoxious. I don't know. It's not obno- I don't know what the word is for it. but It's not obnoxious. It's just obvious. Right. Right. That's like anyone it's can pick up. It's just you're obviously uncomfortable. I remember, I think too, Michael Phelps, maybe he was popping his ears, but he would kind of do this yawning thing before swimming. I doubt it was nerves, but maybe. Hmm. It'd be interesting to see now. Hmm. What do you know? Uh, what my what I my go tos like? Yours, yours are this and my grabbing the neck. Yours doesn't even look at me. I feel like I feel like you rub your hands a lot. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. God damn it! I don't know. Yeah, I see that a lot. Like anytime you're so Belky was talking about steeple. But if before. I tell you, then you're just gonna. You're, you're gonna freak out about them. It's just interesting. It, like people love pointing out stuff that you don't know. Uh, maybe not in this case, but like I can start. I can start pointing it out. Anytime you see, oh, this is a good one too. Thumbs. I, I see this a lot with like. Say you have your hands in your pockets. Are your thumbs in the pockets, mm-hmm. and your hands are outside, or your hands in the pockets and your thumbs are outside? If that makes sense. Yeah, because what if your hands are all the way in your pockets? You're kind of hiding, right? Like. Yeah, yeah. stand up. You'll see people stand I don't think up. You can see, but people like this. You're like, all right, that. For some reason, like thumbs up is always. You're like, not anywhere is- near your microphone. <laughs> point this. Point this right on up. Yeah, if thumbs, I don't know. For some reason, the thumbs are important, right? So, I forget why. Yeah, if they're here in your pockets, this person is uncomfortable. It's just like a more submissive position. That's thumbs versus in- this. Oh, so just thumbs in pockets. So whenever I, I have my hands in my that. pockets, I'm always like thumbs out, thumbs out, Dylan. Mm, always in my head. Think about it. I don't know many people. I remember seeing it in elementary school. People just putting their thumbs in their pockets, and it was kind of weird. 
it's just it's it doesn't make you look as confident yeah uh yeah so i think in general it's freaky once you see all this like i, I would highly recommend i would hate to be joe he's this times 100 i can't imagine that's why i want to ask I texted him you i texted you the other day i was like oh nice isopraxism there because two people were cross oh that's one thing we didn't talk about when people are comfortable they mimic one another they mirror one another mm. it's called the chameleon effect i think at least for language um but it wouldn't be surprising that you started putting your hands on the table and then I started doing the same thing or we both cross our legs or we both – when you're engaged with someone, you tend to mimic what they do. Mm. But, yeah, I'd hate to be Joe because, well, he did this for a living. I, I, he's got to find a, a happy medium of like – I think he just – Well, he said, he said he'd come in the house and he's so keen on like change and like that baseline that he'd come in the house sniffing, smelling – to make sure, because like he had some story about smelling stale cigarette smoke, like very, very faintly. Mm. And then he like knew someone was in the house or the office or something. I think that's too far for me. It, it's freaky. Like it's so, it's literally a superpower. I don't know how else to describe it other than now you just observe and you constantly refine and he's refined it over 25 years. So it's got to be wild at this point. But you can get to 80% of where he's at by just reading the book. Uh, I think there's... I think there's there's so much there. One for telling when people are comfortable, or uncomfortable. Two for also like I used it in the whole dating world of like you know when someone else is interested, you know how to like pretend to not be interested. So by just like pointing your body away or whatever, just touching too. He talks about it a little bit with like uh, kind of knowing. I, I think like a cool one. I don't know if anyone can see, but like the back of the hand on the arm. That's such a good one. Now you can't really do it, so it's kind of pointless. Yeah. But I, I'm a big fan of breaching that touch barrier and like knowing when you can and when to step back and kind of joke about it like and if you can read body language it's all there mm. it's all there well we're clearly tired we we've been trying to shoot this episode for about Holy two boy. hours setting this up uh belky i don't know what we're gonna do about the studio you'll probably <laughs> see something different tomorrow all the guests that There's are something watching. different the next week um go check this out on youtube because you can't really just listen to everything we're saying at least for this episode and i think you're doubling down on youtube right absolutely doubling down we're getting the system all refined there who knows with this 1080p 40 minutes plus an episode actually zoom long form interviews are going to be on zoom so this is probably going to be a smaller file who knows that's all details that's tomorrow we are talking with not our friend but uh, a fellow student emma butler from brown who's currently working on some awesome startup that we'll, we'll delve deep into dive deep into delve Is that i don't know but when i say utilize i get in a lot of trouble and you just mm. said delve all right well belky <laughs> has to know what my pet peeve is for tomorrow or my little uh not pet peeve, my gestures my gestures yeah. and hopefully you pick up the book and can start to understand too so we're all weirdos observing each other oh real quick i want to end on this quote oh i don't really know the quote but it's sherlock holmes Joe says it in the book, and it's oh, I think everyone this, yeah. sees, but not everyone observes. That was it. Something like I that. I bookmarked it. Yeah, it's a really good one, because everyone's seeing the same stuff, just some people are picking up what's actually being said. Yep. All right, that See was episode there. 56. Tomorrow, 57 with Emma. See you See then. You.